Joining us now is Republican Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, co-chief of the Problem Solvers Caucus, a bipartisan group of 58 lawmakers. Welcome to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you, Jennifer. Good to be with you. Congressman Fitzpatrick, the White House says the decision to allow Chevron to start pumping oil in Venezuela is not about oil prices. Do you believe them? I do not, Jennifer. Um, you know, the, the energy crisis that we're facing right now in America, much uh, of that has been self-imposed by uh, decisions that were made by this administration early on to shut down the, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, s uh, further delaying the, uh, the permitting process here uh, domestically. Um, I don't know why we're going to communist dictatorships uh, or begging OPEC Plus uh, to increase production when we have the energy right here in America to get the job done. Staying with the economy, we're facing a possible nationwide rail strike, as Lucas reported. A strike would disrupt yeah. the supply chain again, cost $2 billion a day, cost 700,000 jobs if it lasts a month. Materials needed by refineries won't be transported. Gas prices would go up. This is a big problem for the president. Does Congress need to step in? Well, that would be uh, the last resort, Jennifer. So we're set to leave, uh, uh, leave Congress on December 15th. Uh, the cooling off period uh, for this, um, this negotiation is set down a few days before Christmas. Uh, the union uh, members are, have a very reasonable ask, by the way. Uh, their benefits have not been on par. The, that is the, uh, the, uh, the transit freight workers union uh, have not been on par with other unions. They haven't had a raise in several years. Um, and one third of the product, uh, Jennifer, in the United States is transported by freight rail, including uh, close to 70 percent of our agricultural, you know, grains, feeds, fertilizer and the like. So congressional intervention is a last resort. I suspect that after we pass the CR uh, near uh, December 15th, if that strike has not been averted, we'll be called back before Christmas. And what do you think the truth is? Is the president involved in these negotiations or are they waiting until the last minute like they did in September? I believe he's involved. I mean, this is something that would be of, of, of significant concern, you know, economic concern uh, and, and certainly therefore political concern for the administration. So I'm sure they're involved. Um, they're probably, you know, waiting uh, until the right time to reengage. Um, like I said, it'll be a few days before Christmas before this actually manifests. Um, but con Congress will not let this strike happen. That's for sure. Uh, it would be devastating to our economy. So we'll We'll get to a resolution one way or another. And Republicans will support the president if he agrees with the uh, railroad workers. Well, I certainly would. I mean, every member of Congress has got to speak for themselves. But uh, failure is not an option here. We cannot have uh, our transportation system responsible for one third of our products being transported throughout our country uh, shut down. That's not an option. Congressman Fitzpatrick, you're a former FBI agent. There have been 600 mass shootings this year. The president says he will pursue an assault rifle ban. Will you work with him? We all need to work together, Jennifer, to, to end gun violence in America. Uh, the reality is that we have an epidemic here in the United States that's not being experienced in any other country in the world. Um, and there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of reasons for that. I think people try to oversimplify the problem. <clears throat> the key is to make sure that um, every single um, tragedy um, gets, uh, gets unpacked and figure out what the problem is uh, with that individual tragedy. I know we've had uh, an issue with the background check system um, with Charleston. We had an issue with the mental health system with Uvalde. Um, and there are societal problems as well. We have spikes in, in depression and anxiety rates amongst our children throughout America, largely due to social media. Um, Jennifer, when you and I grew up, if there was bullying going on in school, you could identify the bullier, uh, number one. And number two, the bullying ended at 3 o'clock when you left school. Now the bulliers are anonymous. Uh, social media allows that bullying to occur 24 hours a day. So we have to fix the, the, the loopholes in our background test system. We have to fix our broken uh, mental health system in America. And we have to deal with the societal impacts of social media. It's a very complicated problem that requires a complicated solution. But would you support an assault rifle ban? Well, I voted for it, Jennifer. Uh, it's already come up in the House several months back. So that's sitting in the Senate, um, and that's, uh, that's where it resides right now. 
There's talk of more red flag laws, which allow authorities to temporarily confiscate firearms if mm. the person is a threat to themselves or others. You're one of five Republican House members who voted for a federal red flag law this summer, and you're the only one of the five who ran for re-election. Should the Republican Party support red flag laws? Are you noticing any shift among your colleagues? Yeah, so it depends on how it's written, Jennifer. So, for example, the state of Indiana, uh, Republican House, Republican Senate, Republican governor signed uh, a similar bill like that uh, into law. In Florida, same situation after Parkland, Republican House, Republican Senate, uh, Governor Rick Scott at the time, Republican governor, signed it into law. And a Republican governor now, Rick DeSantis, has uh, kept that law in the book. So there are ways you can write it where it preserves due process, protects law-abiding gun owners' rights, but at the same time advances community safety because, like I said, with every single one of these tragedies, whether it be Parkland or Uvalde uh, or Chesapeake, Virginia, or any of these, it's incumbent upon us to, to analyze the situation. Where were the gaps? Was it a gap in the mental health system? Was it, was it a HIPAA reporting issue? Was it a loophole in the background mm -hmm. checks? Or was it a, something different? Is Kevin McCarthy going to be the next Speaker of the House? <clears throat> I believe he is. I believe he is. Um, you know, I've been in touch with his team. We're working conference-wide to try to get him to, uh, to 218, Jennifer. And the reality is he's earned it. He's de he deserves it. Um, it would set a terrible precedent if he were not to get it because uh, Kevin has put four years' worth of work, four years' worth of fundraising, traveling across the country, visiting all of our congressional districts. He's, he's worked hard. He's accomplished the goal, uh, albeit a slim one, of, of winning back the, the House majority. And he deserves it. And I don't believe there's anyone else in our conference that could get to 218. So I think eventually we're going to get there. Okay. Thank you very much, Congressman Fitzpatrick, for being with us today. Thanks for being with us this holiday weekend. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.